Hello, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. Wherever you are, may the good Lord bless you, guide you, and protect you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Our topic today is the miracle is in your mouth. The miracle is in your mouth. Your life is at the mercy of your mouth. Your mouth is the ruler of your life. Your mouth organizes and directs your life. Life opens in the direction of your mouth. Don't close your mouth if you don't want your life to close. Don't use your mouth to describe your situation. Rather, use it to declare your expectation. God is committed to perform only what your mouth releases. The greatest discipline in life is the discipline of the tongue. Control of your tongue is control of life. Destiny resolves around the tongue. Just everything around man dances around his tongue. Direct your life by directing your utterances. James 3 1 to 7. God respects just what you say. The book of Numbers 14 28. You can only you can have only what you say. The book of Mark 11 23 24. What you say is what you see. What you talk is what you take. Genesis 1 1 to end. Just everything responds to the tongue. No matter how big they appear to be, now, take full charge of your life. The book of Numbers 14.28, Isaiah 44.26, Mark 11.24, you will succeed. You will succeed. Amen. In your mouth, our words have creative power. When we speak something, out we are giving it the right to come to pass it's one thing to believe that you are healed but when you say i'm healed that's what releases the healing it's not enough to just believe you are blessed believe you have favor the scripture says the spirit of faith is in your words when you say i'm blessed i have favored i'm coming out of debt and just go to work Good breaks will find you. The right people will track you down. And you can think positive. You can believe for favor. That's good. But nothing happens till you speak. The miracle is in your mouth. Amen. There is healing in your mouth. There is freedom in your mouth. There are new levels in your mouth. If you are fighting an illness, it's easy to talk about the medical report. How about it looks? I don't think I'll ever get well. When you speak that, you call it a more sickness, more defeat. You need to change what you're saying. The scripture says, let the weak say I'm strong. It doesn't say, let the weak talk about the weakness. Let the weak call five friends and discuss the problem. No, no, no. That's giving life to the negative. Now, I'm not asking you to deny the facts. Just say what God says about you. Your report should be, God is restoring health. Back unto me the number of my days he will fulfill. In my life when my mother was very, very sick, I don't want anything to happen to her. He went, come to the hospital, he, she was diagnosed with so many things. But when somebody asked me how she was doing, it was never a sad song to me. It's sad though. I don't understand it. I'm tired. I know I can't say that. I always say that she's healed with long life and that she's satisfied. And I always say that everything is working well on behalf of my mom and she is okay. You know, there are miracles in our mouth waiting to be released. When I break this addition, when all these things happen to me, when you say, okay, this thing will not come back again, 
you are now winning. Some people are into addiction. They are still praising that addiction. No, you don't have to do that. Every time you say I'm free, in your unseen realm, chains are broken. Strong goals are loose. Freedom starts heading your way. You keep speaking it and you become what you are saying. You are prophesying your future. When David faced Goliath, a giant twice his size, it wasn't a coincidence that he looked at him and said, This day I will defeat you and feed your head to the best of the air. He wasn't just being positive. He wasn't just talking smack. He understood his, this principle. The, the miracle was in his mouth. He had to release the victory. What if he would have said, Wow, I thought I wanted to face Goliath. <laughs> but look how big he is. I don't have any armor. I don't feel disqualified. I don't think I have a chance. If he would have talked defeat, we wouldn't know who David was. If he would have just thought positive, I believe I can do it. I believe I've got what it takes. He wouldn't have defeated Goliath. He knew he had to speak it. I would defeat you. You may have a giant in your path, a giant of debt, a giant of depression, a giant of sickness like David. You need to announce to that giant. I will defeat you. You will not keep me from my destiny. The forces that are of, for me are greater than the forces that are trying to stop me. The scripture says, If any two of you agree, anything you ask according to God's will, it will be done. There is power in agreement. What's interesting is David didn't have anyone to agree with him. His brothers looked down on him, thought he, he was too small. His father saw him as less than, like he had never amounted to much. King Saul didn't think he had a chance. He even tried to give David his armor. So at least it wouldn't be so painful. Nobody was there to encourage David to say, Hi David, you can do this. We believe in you. You've got what it takes. Nobody was there for David. There are times like with David, you can't find anyone to agree with you. But I have learned, if you come into agreement with yourself, if you will get your heart and mouth in agreement and start speaking victory, declaring that you are well able, that you are blessed, that you will defeat the addiction, then even though others don't agree, but you are in agreement with yourself, you will see giants defeated. You will accomplish dreams that others thought were impossible. And don't be discouraged because nobody is cheering you on and nobody sees what you see. Sometimes God puts things in your heart that other people don't understand seems too big too impossible instead of encouraging you they will do just the opposite you think you can beat that sickness i don't know my grandmother died of the same thing that one is not good don't put that in your mouth you still think you're gonna have a baby after all these years you're kind of getting up there you really believe you can build that orphanage write that book lead your company in sales. Move in into that nice neighborhood. I just don't see it. The good news is they don't have to see it. You don't need them to agree with you. Your heart and words going into the right direction. Start talking like it's going to happen. You have to say it before you see it. Amen. You know, in this life, there was one sister I know, the, the son was not feeling fine every time they would be in the hospital. Every time this sister would be saying, I don't know now, if this boy would die, let, let him die. Blah, blah, blah. I told her, please, please my sister, don't use your mouth to cause pain for your life. Just listen to me, sister. Just say this, this boy, you are life in the land of the living. The very day she continued confessing this, I told her, this boy was just being very well. We went, do diagnose, do everything. Nothing came out. The boy was okay. So my, my brothers and sisters, please, 
do the right thing. Always confess positively in your life. Your tongue is your, where all the miracles are. Just believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. Please, don't use your mouth to cause pain. If you are not married, use your mouth to proclaim the type of husband you want. And God will give it to you. If you don't have money, say I'm a millionaire. God will make a way. God will give you business that will attract them millions. I believe it. Because it has happened to me. And God is working. Yes, Jesus Christ is working. He's working. He's doing marvelous things in our days, in our life. He's alive. He is alive. Jesus Christ is ready to help you, to help me, to help every one of us. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. <laughs>